Okay, so we're just going to make a start on eigenvalues and eigenvectors and uh, this little clip I'm going to do eigenvalues. First, a little bit of motivation. A Markov chain is a neat kind of thing. Um, in this case, in this example, we have two states called A and E. And we have a probability of moving between those two states. So I mean, imagine um, some kind of slightly random machine. It can flip from two states called A and E. Um, and at each time step, it has a probability of 0.4 of going from A to E and a probability of 0.6 of staying at A. So, um, of course, that adds up to 1. And then if you are starting at E, and then the next step has a probability of 0.3 of staying there and 0.7 of going to A. So, you know, stays or flips, stays or flips, stays or flips. And these are very useful models for um, probabilistic processes. They're also used for network problems. For example, you could have an, a network of, let's say, um, cities and um, the average number of cars that move from, say, let's say you had a, a car hire business and you, you had a certain number of cars, um, but um, more people were going to go from E to A than A to E, <laughs> and uh, some people were going to stay in the same town. So uh, returning the cars to the same place. Well, if you were running this car hire business, you'd be concerned to, to have enough cars so you didn't run out, for example. And uh, at some point, you know, if all the cars ended up at E, then you'd have to uh, work out a way of bringing them back or maybe charge more so that not so many people went from A to E. Um, so writing this as, as a matrix, we write the probabilities from um, uh, A to A is 0.6, A to E, 0.4, and so on. So that's a little matrix problem. And I, I, this is just a kind of motivational example. But um, one of the biggest matrix problems that, um, that we encounter is the entire World Wide Web. And the way that Google, um, at least traditionally, ranked um, the websites is based on the number of links pointing into them. And so if uh, a website was linked to by a lot of um, a lot of other websites, then it had a big weighting. But of course, those websites might be relatively unimportant. So they wanted to find a way that um, uh, measured the importance of the websites linking to that website and so on all the way back. And so uh, if um, if the these weights were number of links going in, the idea is if you had this uh, little probability game and uh, you just let it run and see what proportion of things ended up at each of the nodes after a long time, um, then the, the ones with uh, a lot of things landing on it would be the most important websites. And you just use that number to order the websites. And that, that's more or less the idea of the Google rank. Um, and the success of Google is based on um, Page and Brin, um, basically using some undergraduate mathematics <laughs> and, and making it into a business model. So um, so the, the, the thing we're going to talk about, eigenvalues, gives you um, a neat way to solve this type of problem. Um, this is to find out what happens to this in the long term. So the, the, the point is that um, to iterate this, in other words, once you've done two steps, it's, it's p times p. And if you want to see what happens to 100 steps, it's p to the power 100 and so on. Um, because you, you do it, then you do it again. It's like following multiple links. And so... Um, if the matrix is as big as the entire World Wide Web, you don't want to be multiplying it by itself hundreds or thousands of times. You need you need a shortcut for that. And uh, we'll know by the end of, well, not this lecture, but the next one. So there's another geometric kind of interpretation I want to give you. Um, uh, a matrix A um, can be thought of as a geometric operation 
that, that takes vectors in the plane to other vectors. So this is a two by two matrix. So if, it, if the matrix rotates things, it's not really going to fix anything. But if it kind of stretches along a certain direction, then the idea is if, you, if there's a vector x so that ax is in the same direction but a different length. In other words, ax equals lambda x. then it's like a matrix is, is kind of stretching along that direction rather than rotating anything. So if there is such a vector x and such a scalar lambda, we call lambda an eigenvalue and x an eigenvector. So uh, eigen comes from a German word, but um, it's um, that, that's just the definition. Uh, Ax equals lambda x. And we've got to have x non-zero for it to make any sense, although it's not interesting because multiplied by zero, you always get zero. And um, if lambda was positive, it's making that vector bigger. And if lambda is negative, it's making it smaller. Um, and for a moment, we're thinking of lambda as being a real number. So how do we find eigenvalues and eigenvectors? We take any square matrix. It's going to be a square matrix. It doesn't make sense. I mean, actually, there are things a bit like eigenvalues and eigenvectors for matrices that are not square. But you have to understand the square case first. So um, we want to find scalars lambda, which could be real or complex, actually. Um, and vectors x are non-zero, so ax equals lambda x. So we're not interested in zero. One thing about the x, though, is that if we find an x, then say twice x will do as well, because we multiply both sides by two or three or minus one, anything but not zero. So in, in a way, uh, an eigenvector is more like kind of eigendirection. It's the direction that matters, not the size of it. Um, you can standardize it by making it unit length just to just so that you have one answer. But uh, it, actually it's an eigenvector even if you multiply it by a constant. OK, so here's the crux. How do you find it? And this is a really neat trick. So um, first of all, if i is the identity matrix, then um, lambda x can be written as lambda i x because i doesn't change things. So we want to make it into a system that we can understand, that we can solve. So Ax as lambda x can be written as Ax minus lambda i x equals zero. And then the neat thing is to factorize the x out. Now something we can begin to understand. You see it's a minus lambda i x equals zero. Now we're thinking of um, a to be a, a non-trivial kind of matrix and x a, a non-zero vector. So you can see that this a minus lambda i, it's a matrix. We've only changed the diagonals of the original matrix by subtracting the same number, but we're looking for a number which actually makes this matrix singular, because otherwise we wouldn't have a solution to this matrix times x equals zero, right? And not a non-zero solution. It would have to be one of those systems of linear equations that has infinitely many solutions. In other words, a singular matrix. So for this to be singular, and now this is a neat trick, it's only singular if the determinant of a minus lambda i equals zero. And so far we want to see if there's a lambda that does that, right? So det a minus lambda i, that's a scalar equation because it's just one number of the determinant, but it depends on lambda. Uh, it's kind of, we have to find the lambda. And, and it's also neat that we've eliminated the x. I mean, once we found the singular matrix, we uh, we can solve this um, this singular system by Gaussian elimination, if you like, uh, to find um, all the solutions x. But let's first solve for the eigenvalue. And this equation, det a minus lambda i equals zero, is called the characteristic equation of the matrix A. So, well, let's hopefully, hopefully we can solve it because um, Debt it involves lots of products and sums of things in, in the bracket. So it turns out that if A is an n by n matrix, then lambda is a polynomial of degree n. So just thinking about this, if this was a quadratic, uh, 
uh, sorry, so this is a, a two by two matrix. We've only changed the diagonal. Um, the formula for the determinant, we multiply the two diagonals and then we subtract uh, you know, the product, the other diagonals. We end up with a lambda squared there. In fact, the determinant involves a product of everything, uh, of one thing from every row um, and every column. So uh, the, the most you get in, in an n by n matrix is, you know, this kind of special case where um, you use all those values that happen to have a lambda in, and then you get a power lambda to the n. And the others typically only involve, you, you, you know, fewer lambdas. And so you end up with a polynomial. So this is a polynomial. So say if it's a two by two matrix, this is easy. It'll just be a quadratic equation. We can just solve it. If it's cubic, well, maybe we can solve it. But I mean, um, in, in general, you have to find um, a root and then uh, factorize it and so on. And you can also solve for the roots numerically. Um, but uh, for two by twos, it's just going to be a quadratic. Uh, it could be a quadratic that, that has a repeated root. It could be lambda minus one squared, in which the answers are one and one. <laughs> so it's possible that we'll get um, well, two eigenvalues, but they'll come out to be different. A polynomial degree n can have no more than n roots. And in general, if you're allowed to use complex numbers, it has n roots, but I mean, some of them could be the same. So you have to count them with a multiplicity, you know, in other words, double roots and so on. OK, so let's do a little example. Find the eigenvalues of this matrix. Well, it should be easy. It's diagonal and you could almost guess. What we do is we form a minus lambda times the identity, which means we just subtract the lambda from the diagonals. And then we write down the characteristic equation, which is the determinant of a minus lambda i. And in this case, it's easy. It's one minus lambda times two minus lambda uh, equals zero. See the eigenvalues are just one and two. So for a diagonal matrix, actually, uh, it's always the case that the, the numbers on the diagonal are the eigenvalues. Um, so in a way, um, well, a lot of matrices, we could sort of rotate the coordinates around and make them diagonal, in which case we get the eigenvalues. Um, so um, uh, it, it corresponds to, you know, thinking about sort of there were two directions in which it just stretches uh, those two directions. Anyway, so diagonal, that was easy. Uh, here's one that's a little bit more difficult because it's got an off diagonal, but it's still got a zero here. In other words, it's upper triangular. Well, uh, a minus lambda i, we've got lambda on the diagonal. Of course, this is still the same. So, um, because the determinant is just that times that, and, and the one times zero doesn't change anything. So actually this um, off diagonal thing is kind of invisible really to, to our uh, efforts to find eigenvalues. Um, so they're still the same. So let's have a matrix that's got something in both the off diagonals, and, and then we have to do a little bit more work. One minus lambda times two minus lambda is still there, but then uh, the determinant formula gives minus one. So we have to multiply this out. Uh, we've got minus lambda times a lambda is lambda squared. In, in fact, that, um, that first uh, number will always be lambda to the n on its own with no, with no coefficient. And you can see that because uh, you've only got um, minus lambdas in those brackets. Then we've got a minus two lambda and a minus lambda, so it's minus three lambda. And then to get the constants, we've got a two minus one. So we have to do a little bit of work to get that. And now we have a, a more interesting quadratic equation. So we can find the roots. Um, we, we may as well go to the formula uh, to solve the quadratic minus b plus minus square root b squared minus four ac all over two a. Of course, the uh, a is, is uh, one here. So We've got nine minus four is five. So it's three plus or minus root five over two. And that gives us two different roots, which you can call lambda one and lambda two. Doesn't matter which way around now. So uh, for this more general matrix, it was a little bit um, different. And there were the eigenvalues. Okay, so um, 
this matrix was symmetric, not that it, we really notice anything, um, and it had two uh, real roots. Um, they kind of it's a bit like complex conjugates because they it's plus five minus five, but of course they're not complex conjugates. They're just both real numbers. One's one's bigger and one's smaller. Okay, so here's a matrix that's not symmetric, so it's a little bit different in that way. The one and minus one, they're different numbers. We plug them in the same way, and of course the difference is um, we've got one times minus one, so that comes plus one, and then we've got lambda squared minus three lambda plus three equals zero. Still perfectly good quadratic, but uh, the discriminant of this quadratic, the b squared minus four ac, turns out to be negative, so it doesn't have any real roots. And so if you ask to find all the real eigenvalues, so there aren't any. I mean, for example, rotation matrices don't have any real eigenvalues. In this case, the eigenvalues are complex, and because it's quadratic, they come out as a complex conjugate pair. Uh, so it's 3 plus or minus i root 3 over 2. And those are the two complex eigenvalues. Uh, finally, we can do a 3 by 3 matrix, um, and it, it works out the same. Of course, it's going to be a little bit more complicated because we have to work out the determinant of, well, this with 3 minus lambda, minus lambda, 3 minus lambda. Um, we can do it using the standard you know, cofactor method, and of course what we get is a cubic, and if the problem is a neat one with nice whole number answers, you might just look at this and try and guess a root and looking at the numbers if you put lambda equals minus one in there uh, you see that that works out to zero um, so you could you could if you want uh, divide through by that root um, but um, well if you're guessing you might guess the lambda minus eight but if you divided by this root lambda plus one you get a quadratic to solve Anyway, that's meant to be uh, an easy example with whole numbers. So we see that the eigenvalues are 8 and minus 1 twice. So it's a repeated root, and so we list the eigenvalue twice. And so that's all there is to finding the eigenvalues of a 3 by 3 matrix.